I'm going to install a Zeller pump system to uh, discharge wa wash machine water into and pump it out of uh, our home. So the system I purchased here is the Zeller drain pump system model 105 and that that 105 kit consists of several things. It consists of here, this is the pump basin. These parts and pieces here that I'll go over it includes the top of the basin here where you make your connections and as well as the pump itself. So this pump is is a, actually sold separate or can be sold separately from this pump system. The pump that's included with this system is an M53D, M53D. Now, the pump system, everything that comes with it it actually comes with two owner's manuals or in, in, uh, manuals. This is the installation manual for the pump kit itself and tells you how to assemble everything. And then this is specific information on the pump itself. But I wanted to go over the pieces and parts in this so that you had kind of a familiarization and that you wouldn't have to kind of study all the stuff like I did before you understand what's actually going on. This here is the float that will actuate uh, the electrical system on it. It rises up and down as the water falls in it. This is the outlet port. Um, this piece is included with the kit. Uh, you don't have to buy this separ separately or make this. It's included with the kit. It threads into the here. It threads into here just like this. The interesting thing about this is when you read the instructions, you'll notice that the, uh, the instructions at, say specifically that there was a weep hole. This weep hole um, must be uh, pointed away from the float itself so that the pump comes with a nine foot cord uh, and this rubber grommet that will fit into this port right here on top of the cap for the container system to make a watertight and uh, airtight uh, system. So this is all the pieces and parts that come with the bag of equipment. There's a cap that goes on it. I'm assuming that this cap will go into one of these two, it will go in this section right here. It's for another application, I'm assuming. This is for this two inch diameter uh, PVC connector fitting here is for the vent. And this inch and a half is for the, um, the discharge pipe itself. So you'll notice, so you got that in here. You have a uh, rubber O-ring. You've got several uh, stainless steel bolts and nuts, and you have this large di diameter gasket that goes between uh, the lid and the container itself. If you read the uh, instructions, you'll notice that this lip here, or this uh, lip here is important to note the way it fits in there, and that this uh, notch right there is also important. That notch lines up with this notch here in the uh, container itself, and then the lid, has a key on it right here. That key on it and the lid will fit in that notch and everything is lined up and it helps align all the the uh, uh, holes in the gasket and uh, the holes in the lid and the container itself. So that's kind of it I did notice is inside the container itself are these locator notches here. This is where the pump fits in. It fits in a, a certain way. A couple other things I wanted to point out here uh, for the installation itself um, that the container itself, the container itself, this side port is for the water inlet. This will come from your drain sink or however you're going to. There's, there is a P-trap that, that will connect into this pump container system. The, the P-trap can be one of two ways. It can be external. So in this diagram here, here's the sink. Here is the pump container system itself. And in between is the uh, water pipe that connects to and there's a P-trap. There's also the option of doing a P-trap internally to the container here. It can, you can actually set up a P-trap inside of here. First thing we're gonna do with the installation and assembly process is to uh, connect the discharge tube to the pump itself. So I'm gonna just do that. That weep hole, again, cannot be pointed toward the float. There we go. So the next stage is to begin the assembly of the container itself. Steps for that. Again, here's the note. If you see that notch right there, we need to pay attention to this notch. It's used for alignment purposes. Here's the gasket itself, the top of the gasket, the bottom of the gasket. 
This is the lip we talked about. This lip goes into the lip that is on the in perimeter of uh, the, or the inside of the container system. I have the notches lined up. So I'm gonna start by setting the pump into the container itself using those lugs in, as a guide. I'm gonna set this down inside here. This is pretty heavy too. So if I can just show you inside here, if you look up on top, this is what it looks like from the inside here. So you see there the pump is now setting inside. Those uh, alignment lugs are not visible because they are now under the pump itself. The next step is to thread the cord through the top of the pump lid, the pump housing. I'll go ahead and work this grommet into the lid. Pull it through. There we go. Snapped in there. Uh, just using a screwdriver to lift the one lid looks lip. There we go. Here's the feeling for the notch here. It goes. But I'm also ensuring is that the discharge tube, which now you can see through this hole here, is lined up beneath this um, uh, port here. The next step is to take the seven stainless steel bolts and corresponding uh, nuts and attach or fasten the lid onto the container and doing so compressing the gasket and also pushing the, the uh, uh, top of the lid securely onto the discharge pipe. There we go. First one. Second one. I need a tool to go ahead and get the gasket to line up properly. I'm The next thing to do is to secure the nuts and bolts together. I'm using a 10 millimeter nut driver. All right, so I finished uh, setting the nuts and bolts in place. It's not tight, tightened up yet. You might notice that this is the port where the discharge tube attaches to, your discharge line will line up here. <laughs> Initially, Everything kind of seated very well, except this was higher right here. And I believe that just, it just because it's a very snug fit with the uh, discharge pipe fitting into the corresponding fitting inside uh, the lid here. So as soon as you begin to snug the bolts down, um, it, it pulled it down and began to compress it. I'm gonna go ahead and not do this in a circular pattern, but I'm gonna do it in a crisscross pattern to make sure that I evenly apply pressure I'm just going around and making sure that the gap is even all the way around. Here's the connection as it ties into the house's plumbing system. I had to use a two inch to uh, inch and a half inch reducer. And then there are various lengths of inch and a half and elbows as it passes through that, st that joist. The pipe you see extending through that piece of blocking. Uh, is connected to the house sewer system on the opposite side. The next step is to connect a 90 degree elbow to that uh, pipe. We're going to take uh, this length of pipe here. I've already pre-made it up and we're going to attach it to the piece of pipe that's extending from uh, the blocking up in the uh, joist cavity right now. So uh, here is the, the 90 degree elbow that's going to direct it down the, the wall. A uh, piece of inch and a half uh, PVC and here is a ball valve that we're going to use uh, in line to go ahead and be able to adjust the flow of water uh, as, the, as it's exiting the pump. Uh, from what I've researched and what I've read, the best way to do this is to use this ball valve to ensure that you, you meter the water so that the water going into the basin sink is match, matches the amount of water that's flowing out of uh, the pump. Uh, it, because if the pump is pumping out water faster than what the uh, washing machine is dumping water into the base, basin, uh, that the pump will cycle on and off and that's not necessarily the best way to do it. We'll go ahead and we will clean and prepare the PVC pipe.
So let me catch you up to where we're at right now. Uh, we already have this uh, down portion uh, installed. I've made up a piece uh, that's going to allow it to run into the corner. That's the next step I want to be able to do. So I used two 45s and a short length of the uh, inch and a half to go ahead and make this. The reason I'm making this because I want the, the pipe to run right into this corner here. We're going to run it down toward the floor. Uh, from the, when it gets closer to the floor, we'll do another uh, 90 degree elbow and we'll run it across this way. And then that will set us up uh, at the right height to go ahead and dump that pipe right into the body of the pump housing itself. Off camera, I've made these pieces here, uh, which connects to this part of the union. Here is the check valve, and again, the check valve does say which way the flow is on here, so you, you want to make sure that this is pointed and or, or, or oriented the correct way. Uh, the next union here, this next rubber connector, and I've made this piece here too. Uh, so I am working to this height right here, and this line right here, my mark right here, uh, gives me the height of the um, uh, connections uh, that will must go into the uh, uh, pump unit itself. Uh, so I'm working with this. I've already measured this section out here. I've cut and glued uh, this piece right here. Allow me to quickly orient this section into the existing section that's already attached to the wall. I've marked it right here. I'll go ahead and glue this up and we'll get it in place. Everything is dry fit. I have the uh, sink in place where it's going to be. Uh, I have the pump in place where it's going to be. I'm preparing to glue this up, so I need to remove these pieces. <clears throat> I'm going to pull this out. Out of the way. Go ahead and I'll glue these up right now. Secure the tub to the floor. I drill a hole through the side of the tub and put wall anchors here and securely fasten this. I've already gone ahead and made the water connections to the spigot itself. That's already done. The next step will just to be finish the plumbing uh, into the uh, discharge pipe and the pump container itself. The next step to complete is to attach the check valve. The kit comes with these two couplings here. They act as a union and will allow you to, to separate uh, the pump uh, from the, the uh, discharge pipe in the case it needs to be worked on. Um, the instructions do say uh, that the supplied clamps must fit and must go on in this groove here. Now for the bottom one. Next, let's start the connections for the vent stack. The last two connections. Do this. So here's the finished install. All the plumbing is done for the pump system itself. Uh, I have the discharge pipe that goes up the wall, over up the wall, and then over through to the next room and into the house septic system or sewer system. And then I just finished plumbing in the vent line here. I wanted to go up above the water level of the uh, of the tub. The next thing I have to do is just to go ahead and plumb in uh, the drain fittings from the sink itself into the pump assembly, the pump tank. Here we're showing just the standard P-trap connections. The inch and a half uh, plastic fittings. I wanted to show you just how quiet this pump is. I have the water running right now. There it is. It's out the, the uh, container in a matter of two or three seconds and recycles itself. Installing this Zowler laundry sink tub was not a really difficult job. And I hope if you take on this project that this video will help you in your efforts. Thanks for watching.